Hi, it's Handy Val. In this video, I will be replacing this part, my crankshaft position sensor on my R129 Mercedes-Benz. But its replacement, location, and function is similar to many other Mercedes. In this video, I will show you what this sensor does. I'll describe the symptoms of a failing sensor. I'll also show a quick diagnostic on how to test this part. And, as in all my other videos, I will show a complete step-by-step -step video how I replaced mine. And near the end of the video, I'll share my experience with the new part, and I'll give you a few pointers on whether you should replace yours too. So let's get to it. First off, what does this thing do, and where is it located? Without getting into a lot of details, this part is used for ignition timing. A signal from this part tells the car's computer when to produce a spark, and the timing of the fuel through the ignition system. So it's obviously important and without proper timing your engine won't produce the right amount of power or it won't even start. It's located near the back of the engine and I'll provide a better visual later. I think a good way to think about this part is from the symptoms of a failing crankshaft position sensor. So when it's not working properly this is what can happen to your car. Number one, probably the most noticeable problem is that you will experience trouble starting your car, notably when the car is already warm. Second is poor engine performance. You may notice poor acceleration, such as slow acceleration or uneven acceleration. This is something harder to notice as it can happen through time and you just become used to it. Third, another symptom is poor fuel economy. This symptom as well could be a number of other problems with the car like a dirty or malfunctioning fuel injectors. Other symptoms are engine misfires, misfires, a rough idle, and stalling. And a failed crankshaft position sensor, as mentioned a bit earlier, could also lead to your car not starting at all. As part of regular maintenance, this part should be replaced every something like 10 years or so, or close to 100,000 miles or 150,000 kilometers. It's a simple part in terms of its mechanical function, but given where it is located, it goes through a lot of heat cycles, which will ultimately lead to its failure. So let's have a look at the part I bought. Now, it's a Hella, which is a well-respected German auto part manufacturer. It's not genuine Mercedes, and it's not Bosch. However, Hella does make a number of parts for Mercedes and under the Mercedes branding. Okay, so how can we test this part? It's a pretty simple to test, and if the part fails, this test then it surely needs to be replaced. And if it passes, it may, may not always mean that it is working perfectly, as this is all about ignition timing. So the slightest amount of failure could cause your car to not function perfectly. So here is a simple test on a cold engine. You've got to get to the EZL, which is behind this plastic here. And it's just held together by a couple of screws, and we're going to remove it now. Here's your EZL kind of thing, your ignition timing, and there it is right here. So we're going to what we're do to do the test, let's just unplug it. The car is, there's no ignition, there's no key in the car. And let's try our test, and I'll give you the test parameters in a second. You need a multimeter to do the testing here, and you're going to want to, you want to maybe put it on the 2000 ohms. Okay, you got to make sure that. Now here's the, uh, here's the sensor, the unplugged sensor, okay. And what we're gonna do here, we're just gonna we're gonna put the red in the middle and the black on the outer. And the reading we should get should be or something around close to 800. Now if you see it here, it's 845. And that's essentially in spec for a cold engine. So if you're seeing something like below 400 ohms, or some crazy numbers above 1500 ohms, or higher, it likely means you've got some kind of problem. On mine, you know, when the engine has been really warm on some long drives, I've done this test and I've got somewhere near 1200 ohms, uh, which, you know, isn't that wildly off the range. Let's have a look at the new one. Okay, so we've got the new one now, same kind of concept. Put one in the center, one on the outer, and we're getting 870. And both have been roughly in and around the same uh, temperature. I mean, obviously one's attached to the car, uh, which has been sitting out here for a while. This one has kind of been sitting out here for a while as well. So they roughly both seem to be in spec, at least when they are cold. 
Okay, so let's replace mine. On my car, it's in a tough position, but possible to take out. On other R129s, like the 500 SL, you actually have more space to get to it. On others, like the 124, the space is a lot tighter than what you see here. So let's just show, let's see if we can spot it. Let me take the air filter out for a better view. You follow this nylon tubing that I have here, which is meant to be kind of a guide. Okay, so there's the five millimeter Allen key that we need to take out. A little hard to sort of picture here, but that is where it's kind of connected. I'm going to zoom out. There it is. You can kind of see the culprit there between the firewall and the oil filter. And I could certainly get my hand in there. Very difficult, a lot more difficult to film, but I can certainly get my hand in there and a screwdriver. And we're gonna try to take it out with this five millimeter Allen head. I've actually got it out. It's not, I've, I've been using this little screwdriver set with a five on it and I've kind of loosened it to take out the screw. You gotta keep the screw. Go in there with your hand, and there it is. I can feel myself turning the screw, and there you go. Okay, it's not too bad. Actually, it was quite easy, right? So that's the five that I was kind of getting in there. Okay, now the second part is now see if I could actually pull the sensor out from its hole. For right now, so you could imagine, right? The screw was in there. It's kind of holding it. Now I'm going to need to pull it out. Okay, and sometimes this could be a problem depending on how old it is. It's actually coming out quite easily, okay? Uh, and here we go, here we go, here we go. Uh, there it is, right? So can we see it? <laughs> Let's see if I could actually get it into position where we could actually read it to see if it's actually original or not. The issue now with this, if you want to be able... Now, the reason why I say I think it's original, but it may not be original, is because to actually remove this properly, the wire actually goes underneath all of this. Makes its way into this connection right here. You can sort of see it. Comes all the way up and then connects right here. So, I've got a couple of options here. Can I be able to fish this thing out. It's actually very, very difficult to actually fish. When you're actually doing this live, it's a lot easier to see, but you're, this is how it's gonna go in. I'm gonna try to fit it into the hole, and then I've gotta go in and screw it. Okay, it seems to be fitting nicely up, and I think I've got it. It's well positioned. Now I'm gonna go in with the screw. The screw as well, you're gonna just wanna make sure you clean the threads. Oh. I'm doing this all by hand here, okay? Now I think I've got it pretty pretty firm in there. Now I'm just I'm gonna actually go in now with the screwdriver. Okay, now this thing is only being held together by eight newton meters. Okay, so it's in there. Now the only question is, how am I gonna fish this thing? Do I fish it from underneath here? Um, how do I do it? I go from I get it somewhere around up here, which could seem to work. I don't want it to interfere with any of this mechanism right here. So that's all, that's where most, where you gotta be most careful. So and you put something here, put a couple of tabs over here. Here, kinda got it here. Uh, kind of kind of connected here as well, a little loose on this side. More difficult here, and then it kind of just slides in with the rest. And for the old one, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to snip it uh, where the actual sensor was, and then kind of fish this wire completely out. But before we even do that, let's uh, let's leave the still one in play here. Uh, let's put the air filter back on. 
kind of put everything uh, back to normal. Let's take it for a drive. Let's get this thing hot and, uh, and give it a test. Don't forget your engine intake air temperature. Nicely. Let's give it a check. And then forget your air filter here as well. And that your breather hose is connected. And we're going to squeeze that in there. So before we uh, take it for its first ride, and we're going to want to disconnect the negative battery, kind of try to reset everything. Um, it's going to take a while for the uh, new sensor to kind of, for the car to get accustomed to it, but it shouldn't take that long, okay? It's after a few days. Uh, but the idea is what we're trying to look for is, you know, do we get better, the, the cold starts, warm starts, is there any difference to that? In terms of acceleration, can you tell the difference? That'll, that'll take a, you know, Hopefully, maybe maybe we can, but that's, again, that sensor we had in there was, was looking pretty good. And then the other one is kind of around fuel economy a little bit, but likely uh, that'll be hard to gauge as well. Kind of got everything at operating temperature, you know, kind of that at 87 degrees Celsius here. Kind of this is my testing ground. You can sort of see it's a little bit uphill, but we're going to try to give it not necessarily complete throttle, but strong, consistent uh, throttle and see how that acceleration, any different from what I recall it being. This is a steep hill. Feels good. Feels smooth. And I gotta say, there's something a little different about it. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a drastic improvement, because obviously the sensor I had there worked well. Uh, but it certainly feels better. So next up, let's give this thing a let's give this thing a warm start test. Just came back from the from a quite a lengthy drive. We kind of see it. It's, it's a hot, humid day here. Uh, temperature is, you know, I'm going to say in the very low 90s. 90s, kind of pretty, pretty common at least for my car here. So we're going to stop it. We're going to wait. Let's just wait a few minutes here and uh, give it a start again. It's been a couple of minutes. Let's give this a uh, let's give this a warm start and and see what we get here. All right, we got our ohms on, right, at the 2,000 ohms. And uh, let's give it a shot. I mean, it is it is hot, right? I mean, it is a hot day. We certainly gave this thing a little bit of a run for its money right now. Let's give it a shot. Let's unplug. Let's unplug it and see what values we get here. Let's compare it to the values I used to get with the old sensor when hot. And, yeah, certainly... Certainly a lot better than the old one. So the old one, I would get up to like 1,100, 1,200 quite easily. So this one seems to be performing a little better. Uh, now, again, going back, is there a performance difference? Which then leads me to the next part of the video is, should you change yours? Okay, so what happened to mine here, right? So, you know, it's been about a few days now that we've got this thing out here. Um, I'm going to say my acceleration feels a little better, right? But, you know, that's just because I'm really in tune with the car. I kind of know how it performs. So I'm going to say slight improvement, very slight. Uh, number two, you know, did my warm starts improve? It feels like they have, but again, not that much different. Um, but incre incrementally a little better. Should you change yours? I mean, I think there are two schools of thought on changing any part of an older car. And you've heard me say this already. If you don't know your history and you think the part may be older than 10 years, then I think it makes sense to swap it, especially if you're doing it yourself. It's, it's cheap. It doesn't cost you much. It's, I mean, you saw me there. I mean, I didn't, there's not much video editing there. That was probably a 20-minute swap out. Um, so again, with this car, I've got 207,000 you know, kilometers. It's certainly well beyond, uh, I don't know if that's the original one. It certainly says Mercedes, makes me believe maybe it is the original one. It does go from underneath all the wiring. Uh, so it certainly needed to be replaced, okay? Now, going back to the second thought on this, if your car is not showing any of the symptoms you know, that we've talked about, and you've tested it, and it somehow seems to be with, within spec, then 
I suggest you keep going with your old one, even if you don't know the history. You know, there's nothing wrong in not changing it. You don't need to change it. But it's good to know the symptoms, and when you may start appearing, then you know you can change it at any time. And at a minimum, complete the test I showed you, even regardless of what you're going to take out of this video. Complete that test, give it a shot, see how yours is behaving. This brings us to the end. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned from it. If you did, please like. And if you haven't subscribed to the Handy Bow channel, please show your appreciation by doing so. And further, please check my channel library as I have a number of videos on Mercedes related to the R129 that are also helpful to a number of other 80s, 90s Mercedes like the R107, W1241, and 140 to name a few. Thanks for watching Handy Bow. Bye for now.